and I see many people, and I really love Ugandans. But there's something about these people of Uganda. I was trained when I was young to love the people of Uganda, and I really love them. When I see you here and rejoicing, I'm very comfortable at home. Thank you for you for all of us doing developmental and the fact that we have been honored today to have the Madam Prime Minister here. Let us build on this. My story was really a story of adversity. I hail from here, Madam Prime Minister, here in Ibanda. My father was the son of Ibanda, and he was so proud of Ibanda. The way he was killed during Idi Amin's time, when I was very young, we lost our father, we lost our property, we lost our dignity. Mine was a challenge to restore the dignity of my father's name, to show the people of Ibanda that there is somebody here. They say that the people of Ibanda killed a Muzungu called Gold a long time ago. Since then we have been punished. This is almost 100 years. The only thing they talked about Ibanda was that we killed the first Muzungu in Uganda. We have served our sentence. Now it's our time to rise again as Ibanda. We are looking for opportunities. We are hardworking. We are peace-loving people. We are grateful to our President, His Excellency President Yoweri Kauta Museveni. The man has given us an environment for peace. He has given us opportunities. Please convey our gratitude to His Excellency the President. My major concern today when I look around the country is the magnitude of shortage of jobs for our youth. We have so many young people and they are growing. I try to reach out to these young people, to give them a message of hope and encouragement, to inspire them to start their own businesses. And I spend a lot more time doing this. Every year we get almost one million young people turning 25 years old. Yet the number of jobs in the formal sector is about 15,000. The informal sector, about 200,000. Where will the rest of the young people go? To me, that is what keeps me up at night. When these young people graduate, they have studied for six years in secondary schools. They have spent three years in university. They spent two years, even three years, walking around with a CV looking for a job. They walk until they are shook, they are the, shoes of their, the soles of their shoes have gone bare. They start to lose hope. When they lose hope, they are frustrated. They start losing their dignity and self-esteem. This is what causes strikes, demonstrations, hooliganism. We cannot have that in a country. There is an urgent, an urgent need for the transformation of our people, especially those young people who have so much hope, so much energy, they don't know where they went with this energy. We need to guide them and work with our government to see that the infrastructure and the environment created is ideal for them to be. I use the analogy or the example of seeds. God has made all of us with so much potential. Then he throws his seeds across the country. Some of these seeds will be blown by the wind. Some will land on a hard rock and they will not germinate, they will not succeed. But most of Uganda is soft soil, very beautiful, fertile soil. These seeds should germinate and grow into beautiful trees, beautiful plants with fruits. This is what we want as a country. I compare the local investors at times to the beans and potatoes. These beans, they don't grow very tall, nor do the potatoes. But some Investors, especially the Indians and Chinese, they also come like seeds in Uganda. But then they grow very tall into big, beautiful trees. They have branches, they have factories, and they have so much fruit. What, of us, what about us, the local people? Why don't we grow to this full potential? We need that direction, that guidance to grow. Many of these Indians have come here and foreign investors with very little, but I've seen them grow in the past 10 years. We need to support our local people. I'm so glad that the Parish Development Board model is coming to Ibanda and all other districts of the country to bring money directly to the grassroots people at the bottom of the pyramid. We need to uplift these people. The government has sorted out most of the challenges, infrastructure, electricity. We have a challenge of high cost of finance and a weak ecosystem. And at times even our own government bureaucracy gets in the way. They make commitments and they are not delivered. We need to work to streamline this. This is my request to you, Madam, uh, Madam Prime Minister. My message to you, the young people now, there is an urgent need for you to set your own goals. Stop, somebody's phone is picking up. Stop blaming your parents. 
Stop blaming the government. Don't blame the schools you went to. Your destiny is in your hands. Now that you have graduated, and I tell you, you have the biggest gift because you have graduated. If I would be in your place today, I would surrender everything I have to be young and be 25 again, to have a fresh start. But I can't. You are in a very cherished position to be able to have time on your side. Use your time well, but you must take responsibility for your life. Every day when you get up and you dress up before you leave your house, look at that person in the mirror. That person in the mirror is your best friend or your worst enemy. If you're going to be a drunkard, you start smoking joints and jaga, whatever it is, it's because you are looking at yourself and feeling sympathetic. You must be strong in character. You must have discipline. You must read books. You must focus. You must have general financial literacy knowledge. Take your life into your own hands. The people of Ivanda, I urge you to embrace ICON, the Ivanda Community Organization Network. We are grateful to Mr. Ochichi of Enterprise Uganda who came here. He only received about a thousand people on these very grounds, but he changed Ivanda. Please, we urge you to speak to the government to, end, to support Enterprise Uganda, the work they are doing. We need to scale them up, to teach us to save and to invest, to change our attitude to life, to have the discipline and confidence and honesty and integrity to do business. And that is so important. Lastly, as I end, the students here, the young people here, all of you, you can choose to be a wolf or you choose to be a lion. Set your goals and smash them. You don't have to be very big in size to be a physical giant to be able to do great things. You can see small people in size can do great things. The stronger you become, the stronger you have perseverance because you will be challenged, especially in business, the better it is. Stay positive and stay the course. Ivanda will be transformed. As I end, if I can remember well, we, Ivanda has not been visited by a prime minister since the 70s, the 80s in Ugote too. The last prime minister who was here was Otema Ramadi. So, honorable Napa and our own, we will come to Ivanda. Ivanda is an MVH. We have four MPs. Today, I am here. MP Iwanda Municipality where we are. The woman MP is on the left. Then you can stand up for the money to come to jail. Honorable Choma of Iwanda North and Honorable Panado of Iwanda South are not with us, but with apology. The, the district is NRM everywhere. The district chairman, Mr. Mayanga, you can stand up. The, the Prime Minister doesn't have eyes by The mayor, they are all NRM. You are about to cry, but I shorten my words. I have very many words. You know, as I am, I stand here. My voters are everywhere. They will say, "Can I miss it?" But I don't know. Can I miss any of us? But but on the other hand, you have accepted a second invitation to come and visit you on the district. Maybe what I will not say today, it will be said when you come either in June or in July. Now, in the district, being NRM, 
it is also the, the number one in the country. We scoop number one position in the whole country. Like I said, of the chairman, the MPs, and all the people of Ibanda. We are proud of Ibanda, not forgetting Patrick Tature, who puts a lot in the development of Ibanda district. Prime Minister, this municipality you see here is a new municipality. It is not only new, I can tell you, in terms of Jokorovko, it is the biggest in terms of area in the whole country. Even the district is bigger than some districts. In terms of population, we are one of the largest in the country. But Madam Prime Minister, we don't have a road unit. They cry on our roads. We can't use our fingers, we can't use spades. If in your priorities you can maneuver and get you at a municipality which is bigger some than some districts, I will not mention them here. But we don't have any road unit. We have very little money for our roads. People are about to eat us. They may have yet to come here because they go potholes, potholes. It is not him. We don't have a road unit. We don't have money to grant those roads. <laughs> Bafunachi, Bafunachi, Batungeri zo. Nidewa bafunga, Batunga decrees, uh, Nidea certificates and diplomas, Na matika. Mwe mole, Mwe mbane mnonga, Kuhungani imanya, Ruhangaba hira mani, Mazima, Haba naba ni wazaku chuma kore. Na utumaya kiki. A kiki, These parents here, have really worked tremendously to make sure that their children acquire what they have today. But the challenge that we have here, right honorable prime minister, a challenge of unemployment. Since here they have the degrees and the diplomas on Kemirumo, Nani Kshama, if we could have a technical school, more technical schools here, so that even if they have the diplomas, that they can also have this other technical school for the support of their uh, the, the, the achievement that they have got. Because you would know, actually, there are so many, they were telling us thousands and, and five hundreds that they have acquired 